Okay, so this is a question on circuits from January 2013, Unit 1 paper. So this question is quite nice because it incorporates quite a few different parts of the circuit stuff. So we've got a thermistor kicking around in there that's going to play a part later on. We've got some series resistors, we've got some parallel resistors. And I've got some unit conversions because it gives them all killer ohms. So let's kick off. So the first question asks... When the resistance of the thermistor is 5.0 kilo ohms, calculate the total resistance. So the first thing to do is deal with the series resistors in this case. So we've got two sets of series resistors. One on that loop there and another in this loop here. So I'm going to call these ones here R1 and these ones here R2. So R1, using our series resistor rules, is equal to 20 plus 20 is equal to 40 kilo ohms. Remember to keep writing the, the K in front of that to indicate that there's a thousand ohms for those ones. And R2 is equal to 10 plus 5 is equal to 15 kilo ohms. Now what we need to do is use our parallel rules because we've calculated the resistance between A and E and we've calculated the resistance between B and F and those two are now in the parallel loop so we need to use our parallel circuit rules. So let's just move that up there. So now what we need to do is combine them in parallel. So let's do 1 over the R total equal to 1 over the 40 from the first set of resistors plus 1 over 15 from the second set of resistors which if you calculate that gives you 0 0.09167 so that's currently in ohms to the minus 1 so that means that our total resistance will be equal to um, 10.9 ohms. So the next part asks you to calculate the current through your battery. So applying our ohms law here new V equals IR so obviously I'm slightly rearranging it I equals V over R and the voltage going around is 12 and the total resistance of the circuit we've just calculated as 10.9 remember that was in kilo ohms so we need to times it by 10 to the power of 3 so that gives you a current of 1.1 milli amps because you ended up with a very small number so I converted that into milliamps or if you want to be generous it would be 0 0.0011 amps So still using the same circuit as before, so bearing in mind those values up there. What we need to do now is calculate some potential differences around our circuit. So the first one it wants to calculate is between A and C. So let's have a look on our diagram where that is. So that's basically across this resistor up here between A up here and C up there. Now, it's quite a nice sneaky cheat way to do this because if you know that the 12 volts is across both of the resistors and that both of the resistors are exactly the same potential difference, you know that that means it's going to be split into 6 volts and 6 volts across each. So that's a nice way to go about solving that question. 
you can obviously use your potential divider equations if you don't end up with resistances which are quite so nice which we're going to use for the next bit with the other one so between D and F if we look up on our diagram again so D and F is over here on the right hand side so it's the potential difference across the thermistor which we said earlier had 5 kilo ohms of resistance across it. So, let's use the potential divider equation that I've just written down there. So, we're trying to work out the V D F, which in this case we could say V0, which is 12 times R1, so R1 will be the thermistor, so 5 kilo ohms over the 5 kilo ohms plus 15, uh, sorry, 10 kilo ohms. Now the key thing here is because you've got kilo ohms on top and bottom, you don't need to worry about unit conversions here. So what you end up with is uh, 60 divided by 15 which is equal to 4 volts. Okay, so the important thing for this when you're using potential divider equation is the resistor that goes on the top is the one that you want to measure the potential difference across. So what is normally it says R1, so that you put your thermistor in for that one, and then obviously you've got both of them on the bottom line there. Okay, so let's just scribble that in. So we've got D. And F. Now, obviously, the next part wants you to look at C and D. So let's just go back to our diagram and have a look what that looks like. So between C and D means you want to measure the potential difference at C, the potential difference, the potential, sorry, the potential at C, the potential at D, and then find the difference between them. So we calculated earlier that the potential drop across A and C was 12, sorry, why 12? It was 6 volts, is what we calculated it to be earlier. And we also know that the potential drop across the thermistor was 4 volts there, which means that the potential drop across the other side must have been 8. Now, so what that means is at D, if you've got 4 left to go down across it, it must be 4 volts there. Simple way to know this, you know that your current is coming out of the long side here, which means you know it's coming through this point here. So if you know that your potential difference across your thermistor was the 4 volts, that must mean your potential difference across this resistor here was 8 volts. So you do the 12, you subtract the 8, leaves you with 4 at this point D here. The same principle with the other one, where the current comes around, goes down through A, loses 6 volts across the first resistor, 12 minus 6 leaves you with 6 volts. So the potential difference between C and D will be 6 minus 4 is equal to 2 volts down there. So let's just scroll that down in the table for completeness down here. So it's between C and D is 2 volts. Okay, so the last part of this question is talking about how things are going to change if the thermistor is heated so that its resistance decreases. So it's been quite nice in this question because it's told you that a thermistor, in a thermistor the resistance decreases as, as temperature increases because they could very well ask you to, to do that. So state and explain the effect this has on the volt meeting beta reading in each of the following positions. So the first one I want to talk about is between A and C. Now the sneaky thing here is that but A and C is actually in a different loop 
to the thermistor. So that means the the thermistor is actually going to have no impact at all because it's, an, it's a completely different loop in the circuit. So the changing of the thermistor is going to have no effect on a C because the potential difference So the potential difference is going to remain the same for both resistors. Okay, so it's going to have no effect on there whatsoever. So the next one is between D and F. And remember that was the potential difference reading across the thermistor. So this time the changing resistance is going to be important. So what it tells you in the question is that the, resi the resistance of the thermistor is going down. Now when we looked at potential dividers we had this equation here which said the written was basically the split of the potential difference is the same and is basically dictated by the sp how the, the relationship is the resistance so the fraction of those. So if your resistance of the thermistor goes down, that means it's going to demand a smaller share of the voltage. So the reading DF will decrease. It would get you one mark for saying what will happen. So, so the reason is because the 10 kilo ohm resistor will have a greater proportion of the voltage. Okay. So, I mean, you, and you could have explained it by saying that the mister, like, will have a smaller proportion of the voltage. Either of those would have been perfectly acceptable in that situation there. 